Hi, welcome to the International Space Station Flight Control Room. It's been a busy day today, and we're very, very happy to be here for uh, talking to some of our uh, students that are actually out here at NASA Johnson Space Center. Space Center, they are the high school aerospace scholars and also the pre-service teachers. Today, we're going to be talking about a very, very popular topic. It's uh, one of the letters of the alphabet, L-M-N-O-P. So today, I have our guest, um, Julie Mitchell. She is the uh, project engineer of the water recovery system. Welcome, Julie, and thank you for coming. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Well, with that, let's get going. Do we have our Hi, first question? Hi, my name is Samantha. Yes. Hi, my name is Samantha, and I'm with PSTI. I was wondering if astronauts need antibiotics in space, how would they be administered? Hi, Samantha. Um, in terms of um, any kind of medicine that the astronauts need when they're in space, um, they actually have a medical kit that they bring up with them, and they actually have medicine stored on the space station. So if they ever get sick, um, they can actually um, use that stockpile of medicine that they have on orbit. Now, if something were to come up where the astronauts were very, very sick and the medicine that they had on orbit wouldn't work, there is the option of bringing the crew members down um, for them to receive medical treatment on Earth. But they do have um, quite a bit of medicine on orbit um, to, to help them if they ever get sick. Very good question. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lauren, and I was wondering, how does an astro astronaut keep safe from pathogens and bacteria while in space? That's a really good question. Um, before the astronauts go up into space, they actually are quarantined for a certain period of time. Um, I believe it's a, a week or two weeks. Um, and that way, before they even go into space, they've already been isolated from a lot of the bacteria and a lot of the pathogens that might make them sick when they're here on Earth. So that way they don't carry those bugs up with them into space. Um, now, once they're in space, um, the space station is actually kept very clean. Um, they actually do a lot of disinfection um, of different surfaces on orbit. They have filters that filter the air. And just to make sure, they actually have different microbial monitoring kits that they use to check for any bacteria, any pathogens that might be floating around in the air. They check different surfaces to see if they have any growth on those surfaces. Um, and they also check all the different um, hardware where they might get water or um, where their food might touch to make sure that they don't have any harmful bacteria or any pathogens growing on those surfaces as well. And so far, there haven't been any issues in that regard, so it's a good thing. <laughs> and a very good question. Do we have another one? Hi, my name is Alexandra Daglio from PSTI. I was wondering, what's the most complicated project you've ever worked on? Um, we do a lot of complicated projects. <laughs> so the area I work in um, is actually advanced water recovery systems, technology development. And so we actually do the next generation of water recycling technologies for space flight. So right now we have a distillation system that we use on the space station. But uh, the work that I do actually looks at what we're going to do next. And if there are other technologies that might work better once we're on a planetary surface, for instance. So the most complicated project, I would say, is actually one that I'm working on right now and it's called the alternative water processor and what it does is it actually combines a biological water processor in a membrane system to get the water from wastewater to potable. And so the way that biological water processor works is we actually have specific species of bacteria that actually feed off of the contaminants that you find in wastewater. So they feed off of the urea that you find in urine. They feed off of the surfactants that you find in soap and gray water. And so those bacteria are specially selected so that they can actually convert those contaminants into nitrogen gas, carbon dioxide, and water, which is like excellent for space flight. Um, downstream of that, we have a membrane system that deals with all the inorganics, so all the salts that you have in your urine, like calcium, sodium, sulfates, phosphates, that kind of thing. Those things get removed by the membrane system. And so what comes out of that system we're expecting uh, will be water that's nearly potable. And so that's an incredibly large, complex piece of hardware. Our entire team is working on it. And so um, it's, it's very complex, but it's also very exciting as well. Very good one. Great. Thank you. Hi, my name's Stephanie Carroll, and I'm from PSTI program. And my question is, what is the process of pre-treating urine? That's a really good question. Um, so when 
let me step back a little bit and explain why we pretreat urine. So when a astronaut urine, urinates um, in space, um, we don't necessarily get to recycle the water from that urine immediately. And so sometimes that urine can sit around for a couple of days up to a couple of weeks. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that that urine doesn't break down chemically uh, because when it breaks down it can produce um, toxic gases like ammonia gas that you don't want building up on your spacecraft. Um, also we don't want microbial growth on the spacecraft. So if you've ever put a piece of pizza or something in your fridge and you let it sit there for a long time and you get a piece of, you know, a big mold growing on the surface of it, um, that's the kind of thing we want to avoid on the space station. If you imagine a big uh, fungal mat or piece of mold in a tube that's about this big around, um, it can get clogged very quickly. And so that can actually damage the hardware to the point where we can't recycle water. So we pretreat the urine to prevent the chemical breakdown of the urine and to uh, inhibit microbial growth. So the pretreatment process is actually pretty straightforward. We have a tank that's filled with a pretreatment fluid, which is about the most, um, one of the most powerful disinfectants that you can have. Um, it's a mixture of sulfuric acid and chromic acid. So you don't want to get this on your skin. You don't want to drink it. The astronauts don't drink it. Um, but we put it in the urine to prevent microbial growth until we can extract the water from that urine. And so we have a tank full of that fluid, <clears throat> and whenever an astronaut urinates, a certain amount of that fluid is injected into the urine each time. And then it goes into the storage tank um, to wait until it's processed. Very good question, and that was a fascinating answer. And I bet none of you have ever seen uh, the moldy pizza in your fridge. <laughs> Next question. Um, hi, my name is Whitney. Uh, my question is, how is the urine contained until it's processed, from the time it leaves the astronaut to when it is processed? Uh, that's a good question, actually. Um, so when the astronaut urinates, there um, is a fan that actually sucks the urine down through the tube uh, where the astronaut urinates, and that goes through um, a separator that removes the gas from the urine, and then it goes into a storage tank. And depending on um, how much urine we've collected, that tank will actually um, feed urine into our water processing hardware. And so, um, like I mentioned before, that tank, that water, uh, the urine that's in that tank, can sit for a few days up to a few weeks before it's processed. And so, um, you know, the pretreatment does its work really in that tank, and then uh, from there it feeds into our distiller that actually removes the water from the urine. Thank you. Uh, hello there, I'm Jerry George. I'm, we're from the Haas program, and I would like to know what happens if someone has an infection that goes to their urine? Is it safe to drink? And then more specifically, how do they figure out how to drink urine? That's a good question. Um, so like <laughs> I mentioned before, <laughs> um, the pretreatment does an excellent job of preventing any microbial growth. And so um, it pretty much kills everything that's in the urine. Uh, we haven't had any issues in terms of pathogens making their way through the water recovery system. So that chromic acid and that sulfuric acid does a really good job of killing any pathogens. Um, if you've ever seen Aaron Brockovich, um, the people in that movie who get sick, um, they actually have hexavalent chromium in their water, that's the stuff that we put in the urine to kill everything that could grow in that urine. <laughs> so um, as soon as it gets dosed with that pretreatment, um, any pathogens or any infections that might have been in there are essentially eliminated. And so from that wastewater tank, it goes into a distiller and that distiller actually heats the urine slightly to the point where you have water vapor that's produced. And that vapor is actually what's extracted um, from the urine and condensed in a separate container. And then from there, it's not completely potable. We still have a few more steps that are followed. Um, there are ion exchange beds that that water goes through. Uh, and then we add a biocide just to make sure that once it is potable, we still don't have any downstream contamination of that water. And so that's that's the full series of events um, to, to remove any pathogens from the urine and to get it from wastewater to potable. Very good. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Colton, and I'm from the, uh, the Haas program. 
and stepping away from urine for a second, um, if there's an emergency situation that requires astronauts to evacuate on the ISS, what are the procedures for them to follow? Um, that's a really good question. Um, as part of their training, actually here at JSC, they do a lot of emergency evacuation procedures, and they have different procedures they follow depending on the type of emergency. If they have a fire, if they have um, a cabin leak, things like that, um, they practice that quite a bit here on the ground. Now, the first thing they're going to try to do is recover the space station in the case of an emergency so that they don't have to evacuate. But in the instance they do have to evacuate, they do always have um, a lifeboat, uh, we call it, so a Soyuz spacecraft that's uh, docked to the space station for them to get into and return to Earth in case of an emergency. Very good. And also, they um, do Thank periodically, you. while they're on board, they, uh, they also participate in onboard training so they can maintain that proficiency and their skills and be ready for if an emergency were to occur. Good question. Hi, my name is Deanna, and I'm with the Haas program. And my question is, what are you currently doing to improve the efficiency rate of the uh, urine recycling system? That's a really good question, too. Um, we actually have a project going on right now um, to help increase the water recovery rate on the space station up to 85%. Originally, we were planning to start out with 85%, but what actually happened was the astronaut's urine had a lot more calcium than we expected. And so that calcium combined with the sulfate from our sulfuric acid pretreatment and actually precipitated out in our distiller. And um, that precipitate is called gypsum. And it's the same stuff you have in, like, drywall, for instance. So everybody's seen gypsum. Um, and so uh, one of the technologies, actually several of the technologies we're looking at now are to either remove the calcium or replace that sulfuric acid with a different pretreatment so that we don't have that precipitation problem. Uh, we actually have two technologies, uh, one for calcium and one to kind of mitigate the sulfate, that have both been demonstrated to work very well and allow us to get up to 85%. Uh, the space station program is leaning towards the, the alternative to the sulfate. And so we're actually in the process of pursuing that for flight right now. So we're hoping that within the next year or two, we can get the space station from 75% up to 85% water recovery. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you. Hello. My name is James Kwan from Haas Program. And you said the after filtration of urine, which is 80% required, recycled, um, what are they using the final 20% uh, for? That's a good question. Um, so the remainder of what doesn't get removed from the urine is called a brine. And um, right now, that brine put, it, it's put into uh, brine storage containers. And those are thrown in the trash. We get rid of those. Um, but if you think about it, there's a lot of water in that brine that we could get. And so one of the active areas of research in my group is called brine water recovery, which is looking at different ways to extract water from the brine. And the reason that is a, a unique challenge is because once you go past, you know, 80, 85% water recovery, you start precipitating solids out. Um, even with some of these new technologies, like I just mentioned, you still are going to precipitate at some point. And so with this brine water recovery technology, uh, we have to specifically design it to be tolerant to solids formation. And so we're hoping that we can extract uh, the remaining water from that to continue to close the water loop and hopefully get to, you know, in the 90s or even higher, um, you know, full uh, loop closure uh, for future spacecraft beyond ISS. Okay, thank you. Very good question. Do we have some more? Hi, my name is Katie from the Haas program, and we were wondering what's done with the um, waste that cannot be recycled, and how is it transported back to Earth? So um, a lot of the brine that actually gets generated, like I said before, uh, gets thrown in the trash. And so um, a lot of that gets burned up in the atmosphere. Um, we do bring back samples of that brine to actually analyze to see what is left over after we've removed water uh, from the urine. 
And so uh, one thing we've done as engineers is look at some of the chemical data of that brine and use that to design our hardware. So astronaut urine is a lot more concentrated in general than uh, the urine that we have here on the ground. And so we'll actually collect urine for our testing and we'll add chemicals to it to make it mimic uh, the concentrations that you would see on orbit. And so um, those brine samples really help us with that. And they also help us, especially with testing that brine water recovery hardware I talked about. Um, so hopefully we'll get to the point where um, we can actually recycle the water from the brine as well. But right now we throw it in the trash. So. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bandy Poitzer from the PSTI program, and I want to know, are there any major differences to urine in space? Um, there are some differences. Um, like I mentioned before, the urine that's in space, we've noticed, is more concentrated than what we have here on the ground. Uh, and the reason for that is when you go into space, um, the fluids in your body get redistributed. Because here on Earth, the fluids are kind of drawn to where your feet because of gravity. In space, we don't have that. And so the fluids kind of go up into your head. And so when astronauts first get on orbit, you can actually see that their faces are very puffy. Um, and so what happens in that case is their brain interprets that as, oh no, I have way too much fluid altogether. I need to get rid of it. So that causes the astronauts to urinate a lot more. Well, that can actually cause the astronauts to get dehydrated. And so, um, you know, they're very careful in terms of how much water they drink, but we still see higher concentrations across the board of, you know, calcium, like I mentioned before, um, all the different um, minerals and all the compounds you find in urine are higher concentration. And so when we test hardware here on the ground, we have to take that into account to make sure that, you know, for things like calcium, for instance, we have the right amount to appropriately challenge our hardware. Thank you. I think we have time for a few more questions. Do we have next another one? Uh, hello, my name is Eric Williams and I'm here with the Haas program. And my question was, what are some of the challenges you've encountered in working with other nations uh, for systems and stuff like this on the ISS? Uh, that's actually, that's a really good question too. Um, our team personally doesn't work um, with international partners as much, but we do work with the space station program a lot, and the program kind of coordinates between all the different international partners. And so uh, the project that I mentioned with the precipitation issue in the water recycling system on ISS um, is something that has to be worked between the U.S. and Russia. And if we do end up replacing that sulfuric acid pretreatment with something else, um, we have to work that with the Russians to make sure that when it gets installed in their system, um, that their hardware is compatible with that, um, that their hardware, you know, is appropriately sized and so on. And so we have to work uh, very closely with them and we have uh, individuals on our team who have traveled to Russia several times and we have a lot of telecons and a lot of meetings to talk to them to make sure that um, we're on the same page so that when we fly this to ISS, um, we don't have any issues. So. So it, it can be a challenge, but, um, you know, we all want to recycle more water on the space station, so we're all happy to work together. Thank you. Hi, my name is Thomas McKenna. I'm here with PSTI, and my question is, does microgravity have an impact on pH levels in urine? Um, the pH level specifically, we don't see a major difference between uh, what's on orbit and what we see on the ground. Um, there's a pretty wide range. It really depends on your diet, depends on how much water you drink, that kind of thing. Um, and so we have some people with fairly acidic urine, um, like pH in the fives, and then some people with higher pH, you know, into the mid six, um, you know, 6.5 or so pH. And so really what we've seen on orbit um, are pHs that fall into that range, so it's nothing outside of the norm. Thank you. Hi, my name's Chelsea Weber, and I'm here with the PSTI program. And I have more of a general question is going to the restroom in space a complicated process? <laughs> um, that's a really good question, too. Um, <clears throat> I've personally never used the ISS toilet, so I can't speak firsthand. Um, 
but I have seen uh, footage and I've heard from crew members um, that it can be a challenge. Um, the funnel that they use on orbit to uh, to do their number one, <laughs> um, it's a it's you know maybe this about this big diameter, um, and so you have to have good aim. <laughs> Uh, there's a fan in there to, to kind of help suction it in, but um, you know I've heard that it can be messy. And so right next to the toilet, they have actually a series of you know baby wipes, um, gloves that you can put on in case you don't have such good aim. Um, <laughs> lots of you know several different kinds of toilet paper, that kind of thing. Um, and so it can be a challenge, but I've heard that once you get to once you get used to it and once you get the technique down, it's not too bad. <laughs> Okay, thank you. People want to know about the LMNOP. <laughs> Good question. Do we have another one? Uh, yes, I'm Katie Schneider with Haas, and I'd like to know how much education and training did you go through to get your position? Um, so I actually um, I have two degrees. I have one in aerospace engineering and another degree in geology. Um, those aren't directly applicable to what I do, but it's really the problem-solving mindset um, and the background knowledge in engineering principles, in chemistry and physics that have really helped me with my job. So if you look at the entire water recovery systems team, uh, we have civil engineers, we have mechanical engineers, electrical engineers. Uh, we also have several chemists uh, that work in the lab with us. We have a microbiologist who helps us, uh, for instance, we're when we're evaluating uh, whether pretreatment is working or not, um, they're able to actually plate those samples out on petri dishes and see what's growing and how much. Um, and so, you know, pretty much any kind of engineering or science discipline um, would get someone to this position uh, to be able to do this kind of work. But for me personally, I did aerospace engineering and geology. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Katrina Catrone. Similar to that, um, how did you get into this profession? Because I know maybe at like five years old you didn't know you're going to be a urine specialist. So, how did you? How was the process of that? Um, that's a good question. Um, I've always been interested in space since I was a kid. Uh, space travel has always been fascinating to me. As I got older, though, um, it became more of a question of survival and what can we do to make sure our species is around long term. And so uh, going through school, I started thinking about human space flight and the fact that we have to set up habitats on the moon and on Mars and uh, like we have in, on the space station right now, we need um, permanent habitats in space if we're going to continue as a species. And so um, that actually drove me towards um, spacecraft engineering. So I did aerospace engineering um, initially and I added geology after that. I found out about uh, a program called the Cooperative Education Program, uh, at least that's what it was called at the time. Um, and that actually allows students who are in college to come and work full time um, at a NASA center. And so I had the opportunity to come to JSC and uh, I learned about a group called the Crew and Thermal Systems Division. And this is a group within engineering that just focuses on, they have thermal, you know, thermal control as well, which is cool. Um, but I really like the crew side and how do we keep people alive in space? Because to me, that comes back to that survival question of, you know, how do we continue the species and how do we keep ourselves around for a long time? And so within that crew aspect, um, there are a number of different groups, um, people that work on atmosphere revitalization, so recycling the air on the spacecraft, people who work on habitability, so the people who actually design the toilet. Um, they designed the galley and so on on the space station. Um, and then also the water recycling team. And so I was able to kind of work my way in there and they had an opening on the water team and so I was able to come on board and start with them. So um, that working uh, full time at JSC as a student really helped me to kind of pinpoint what area I wanted to go in. Excellent, excellent Great. question and excellent answer. Thank you very much uh, for coming out and talk. I think that's all the time that we have. Um, guys, thank you for uh, coming in and thanks for the excellent questions. This thank you for Mission having Control me. Houston. Bye, guys.